one of the things that can really help sell an image to make it believable are these kind of finishing touches. And the first one I'm going to talk about is shadows. One of the biggest giveaways, especially when someone's standing in a photograph, if they're not casting a shadow at all. Now, having said that, be careful because I've also seen people add shadows where there doesn't need to be one and then it also looks equally unrealistic. So in this case, I want to add a bit of a shadow and try and build on what's already there. In other words, if I zoom in, you can see that there's already a bit of a shadow underneath her boot here. And one of the little tricks you can do to kind of give yourself some frame of reference is temporarily hide the layer mask. Shift click on the layer mask and now I can see this is where the shadows were before. So I could, this one option is to try this and just kind of make a very rough selection, doesn't have to be very accurate. Then we're going to turn this back on again by shift clicking. Now I need to have a layer below because I want to make sure the shadow is underneath her. So I can do that in a couple different ways. I can either click on the background layer and then add a new layer or if I'm already on this layer here, hold down the command or control key when you click on the new layer button. It's going to automatically add it below. Then I would consider rather than just filling it with black, picking up either the shadow that I can see or a really dark part of the image. And that's usually the approach that I take is say let's pick up a really dark area and I'm going to fill that selection which of course right away just does not look good at all. I want to make it look a little better and I'm going to do one quick thing and that is I'm going to right click on this layer that I've created and choose convert to smart object. The reason for doing that is now if I do any kind of filter like a Gaussian blur it's going to be what's called a smart filter. So that way I can change the setting. So I'm going to start off with just a little bit of a blur or something like this. Then I'll change the blend mode to multiply. It looks a little dark so let's lower the opacity. When we look at most shadows you can actually still see part of the texture and ground underneath. So I almost always try multiply and then lower the opacity. So sometimes that means Initially, you might use a slightly lighter color for your shadow because when you go into multiply mode, it's going to get darker. Now, as you can see here, when I applied, made this a smart filter, there's the Gaussian blur. I can turn that on or off or double click on it to say, well, what? let's try it just a little more because I want this to be pretty subtle. By putting it on a separate layer, I can use my move tool and kind of nudge it to a better position. Let's look at it further away. It's not bad. I think it might be still a little much. I'm just going to lower the opacity a whole lot more. Now just to prove the point of not always needing a shadow, let's take a look at these images for a second. Here's a couple of backgrounds that I shot for my backgrounds for compositing and I always have a reference person, in this case me, and if you look really closely you can see there's a very tiny shadow. But in the final product, if you composited someone on here kneeling, would you really need a shadow? I mean you could. But that's kind of the point, is that don't assume that there always needs to be a shadow. Here's another example taken on the same day. It was kind of overcast. There's not a hair of a shadow there anywhere. I mean, I can't see any shadow. So therefore, if I composited someone in here and added a shadow to them, it might almost look artificial because there's really no need for a shadow. So really the bottom line is, should you add shadows? And the answer is, well, it depends. If you do, look at the light source. Where is the light coming from? Are there any shadows in your existing background image that you can use as a reference and actually pick up a color from them? It will depend a lot on the situation. In here, I might want to accentuate this even further by building on this. Let's add a curves adjustment layer. I'm doing that right above the background layer so I can make it a whole lot darker and then let's just zoom out a bit. I'm going to use my polygonal lasso tool and all I'm going to do is try and put some light as if there's maybe some kind of a spotlight up here in this alleyway. That's going to look a little odd at first. I'm going to fill that with black and then just move it up a little bit and again right now it doesn't look very good I understand but that's because all I've done is I've made a curves adjustment layer. I've put a mask on here to say don't darken that area and then all I do is move this feather up to really soften the edges. So now we're just getting that little bit of light coming in there. So subtle difference but that's the kind of 
finishing touch that can really help sell something. I would also recommend that look at existing photographs of real shadows and sometimes you'll find there's not just one big shadow there's another small one coming from a different angle because there's more than one light source nearby. The one thing I would suggest that you consider is some people take an exact duplicate of this shape, fill it with black and then transform it to fit and while that's okay in some situations. Real shadows generally don't look like that. That's something you really need. That's why I said if you can look at other photos and kind of study shadows and see, you'll find that what really sells a photograph is the subtle effect, not like some big honking shadow that you're like, hey, that looks like they just free transport someone and blurred them and made their own shadow. Honestly, we used to do that a number of years ago in Photoshop, but not so much anymore because there are better methods to make it look more believable.